And now for a stroll to the Bell Tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well then, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I know that name. Lodgok said he was an ancestor of Renrock. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Now, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here in the Bell Tower entrance hall. All students introduce themselves to this hero of Hogwarts. Abandoning class to wander the halls is in keeping with Professor Benz's manner of teaching. In the Goblin Rebellion of 1752, such as sewing buttons on witches' and wizards' coats. Without his quick hand and deft needlework, countless witches and wizards have caught cold during the late spring of that year. He never strays from the bell tower and the floor. Yes, students with a thirst for knowledge would do well to seek him out. 